another episodic podcast to get that It's Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Talkamania. I'm your host, Desmino, with my partner, J-Bomb. Say howdy, J-Bomb. Howdy, J-Bomb. That's the first time you actually listened to me verbatim. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you've told me... For, how many episodes were we at? We're like... Fuck, we're getting up there, man. It's been a while. It's quite a while, well, yeah. I'm wondering if we've done 100 yet. I wonder if... Oh, I deleted a lot of them. If we haven't, we definitely have to do a 100th episode special. What would we do special, though? I don't just, know. We do, we do flashbacks of all the just incoherent conversations and <laughs> or, or looking back at where we've come and how how crappy we were then and how crappy we are now. <laughs> I was gonna say I don't think there's much improvement. Holy shit, dude! How you been this week, man? Oh, I've been doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. I'm looking forward to the weekend. I'm going to Fan Expo in Toronto. Uh, it's a really cool event. I used to go there many years ago. I haven't been in quite some time. Uh, it's really cool. Giant convention in Canada where they have sci-fi, horror, video games, anime, wrestling, all kinds of things, all under one house. I love the merch and the vendors. That's really cool. Lots of celebrity guests. Uh, so I'm going to be hitting that up. Uh, I'll be bringing you Talk of Maniacs along with me. I'll be posting pictures and having some fun. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. Sweet, man. Are you bringing your wife? I am. Uh, we're going to be rep- representing Takamania. we got our Takamania gear, and uh, we'll be hitting the floor, and we'll be taking pictures with some cool cosplayers, man. It's going to be great. It's pretty dope. Which wrestlers are going to be there? I mean, we were well, talking about that. Yeah, so some wrestlers are, are going to be at the event. Uh, so this week they were in Toronto for Raw and for SmackDown. Uh, so they're unfortunately, they're doing their appearances tomorrow at Fan Expo. I'm only going to be there ah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, so unfortunately, I will miss it. Uh, it's very sad because it was only announced last minute. But uh, you know, at the same time, I'm you know I'm not going to pay two hundred dollars to meet Triple H. I know some of you might out there. No, I'm not going to. No, no, no. So, but uh, AJ Styles will also be there. The Miz will be there. Charlotte Flair will be there. Uh, so a lot of cool people. Well, you know, some cool wrestlers to meet. But uh, unfortunately, did not line up with my schedule, and uh, I'll have to meet them another time. I mean, we're going to WrestleMania, right? So we have a lot of opportunities to meet wrestlers that weekend too. Yeah, so. and and the, and what what's funny is that the first year we choose to go to WrestleMania, they announced that SummerSlam is coming to Toronto. Yep, folks. So it's like so right beside us. Fuck. That's it. That's it. It's a quick drive over for J Bomb and I. You know, we can just rip over, and so. WrestleMania is going to be a reality in 2019. SummerSlam looks like it might also be a reality on the horizon as well, too. So really exciting news. Oh, I'm going. I don't see why not. Yeah. Fuck it. Can we That's save it. your sister? Talk of mania. Yeah, we'll figure it out. My sister. I mean, we can find an Airbnb. We can find a hotel. We're going to make it happen, folks. And that's it, man. Talk of mania is going to be all over the place, man, next year. And this year. All the time. And this year. We're everywhere. Come on, We're fucking man. awesome. Come on, man. Dude, tell our listeners uh, where, they can, where they can find us online. All right, guys. If you're living under a rock, we're Talkamania. We're here. We're your boys. We talk about wrestling every week. We banter. And at the same time, folks, check us out on the Twitter, at underscore Talkamania, on iTunes, on podcast, on, sorry, Podbean, on Spotify, <laughs> ProWrestlingTees.com. Buy some of our t-shirts, man. Yeah. Lots of people oh. are digging our logos, man. I like it. I print out a couple for the convention. You should check them out, too. Represent. And uh, it helps us produce the show and make things better for you on a weekly basis. And we love the support you guys have been showing us. We keep growing, and it's all thanks to you. And this weekend, and I haven't even tweeted out because I've been lazy as balls and busy at work, uh, 20% off the entire um, Pro Wrestling Tees website. So whether you're picking up t-shirts for All In, for WWE, for Hell in a Cell, for Evolution, for whatever the hell you're picking up, even though they're those t-shirts probably don't exist. Uh, pick up one of ours, 20% off everything store-wide, and uh, be like Peteopolis, our buddy Pete, um, at Peteopolis on Twitter. Uh, he's a Twitch man. He has WordPress blogs. Cool dude. He's actually in Chicago. Well, he lives in Chicago. But uh, him and Chris Rucker, your best friend, are, uh, are going all in, those little bastards. Yeah, I saw that. Really excited for them. I hope they have a blast. And uh, again, man. We're thinking about you. Let us know how you enjoyed the show. We're really, really interested. It's going to be a hell of an event and history in the making, and you're lucky to be part of it. So right on, brothers. Pete, Pete, wear your shirt. 
take a picture. We'll post it everywhere. Uh, dude, I've spent the last four days watching Beanie Elite. I think I've watched, fuck, nearly 30 episodes, I'd say. And they're about 10 minutes each. Dude, it's so good. You got to get on the wagon. Buddy. Yeah, I think you I'm going to. I'm hearing lots more about it. And I know I'm late to the indie wagon and being the elite, uh, but uh, I'm going to get on it, folks. I'm getting more and more and more into this scene and I'm liking what I'm seeing. So absolutely something I'm going to be jumping right on. And I will be checking all in this weekend. I will be in Toronto, but I'm going to definitely make sure to catch it. If not while I'm there, when I return, I would love to see it live, though. But uh, we'll see. Uh, anyways, I'm super excited for it, super excited for the wrestling scene itself, but J-Bomb, I'm super excited for something even grander. Uh, I don't know, do you want to tell the listeners now? Is now a good time to unveil oh, our surprise mystery guest this week on Takamania? Yeah, it came out of nowhere. We had like two days to prepare, but uh, we're really excited to share this with you guys. Uh, at the end of this episode will be some bonus footage. We sit down with the hardcore legend himself, Mick Foley. Back guy. Yeah, bang! Ah, I should have gotten a bang bang clip, but dude, very cool, um, really cool experience. And uh, he's got a tour going on in Canada, um, twenty years of hell. But we'll wait till the end of the episode because he's going to explain it all. Uh, so stay tuned, guys. We'll uh, we'll get to there. You don't want to miss it, man. Great interview, great guy. Such a pleasure and an honor for him to be part of our show at Takamania. Look at us. Imagine this is the hundredth episode and we don't even know it because oh. we're getting close. It's got to no, be. Maybe it's 50th. I don't know where we are. I'm <laughs> so not, lost. That's not even close, but sure. <laughs> well, 50 is still a milestone. But anyways, um, so Raw and SmackDown this week. Um, but what are the big takeaways I, I guess a here? a lot happened. Yeah, the big takeaways for sure. I mean, we got to talk about, uh, you know, the Braun Strowman tagging up with Roman Reigns. Uh, the heel turn at the end, which was confusing, the shield being involved. I mean, fucking walk me through it, man. Like, what were your right. thoughts on it? So, I mean, the most exciting part about this week for me was kind of seeing how the crowd was going to react. We're in Toronto. The crowd's lively. WWE likes to call it Bizarro World. Uh, but they're passionate, and they like to have their voices heard. Uh, Roman Reigns came out. The crowd chewed him apart. Kind of felt it threw off his promo a little bit. It was a little bit stale this week. Uh, but, you know, Strowman did come out, and he made it official. He will be cashing in his money in the bank at Hell in a Cell. What do you think about that, though? Like, how, how do you feel about... You called it. You said that he was going to just straight up make a match. Yeah, I'm a little bit concerned about that, because usually when we see this happen, you know, it, the, the title does not change hands. So it takes away the excitement, right? It does take away the excitement, but it, it makes it a little bit fresh. You know, it makes... That's true. So, I don't know, because here's the thing, right? Strowman said, I'm going to do it to your face. I'm not a coward. But then he turns heel at the end. So now would he do it? So I don't know. We've been talking a little Ooh. bit about this J-Bomb and I on the side. And, you know, there's a lot of things that you can read into. The fact that Braun Strowman gave Corbin the briefcase. Corbin said, well, I'll take care of this. And at some other time, he said, I had some paperwork to work through. Like, you know, who knows? You know, maybe Corbin's going to throw some curveball. And uh, what was your suggestion that potentially Corbin's actually setting it up for himself to take it? Or or maybe Kevin Owens is going to kind of pull a fast one there because he quit and he'll come back. Some, I mean, I don't know. There's a little bit. Of, I think I'm thinking too fantasy oriented here. I think uh, WWE is not going to be that. Are. They're not going to be that creative in their booking, right? So, uh, yeah, it would be cool to kind of see the fact that he kind of gave it to him. Kind of was like, well, why didn't you? I guess that's him making it official. But then again, now Baron Corbin does have it and he does have power. Who knows what he could do with it? But, you know, ultimately, it'll probably be nothing. But it's got it's got to be something. He wouldn't have handed him that thing. They wouldn't have, you know, like later on in the show, it was like part of the shot. It was standing there beside Baron Corbin. So you have to Mm. think that. Either Baron Corbin is going to put his name on the contract or Baron Corbin is going to put KO's name on the contract. I know us as a podcast, we always go back to what the hell did Triple H tell KO? Mm -hmm. But you got to think, you know, Corbin, Stephanie McMahon, Triple H. I don't know. I could just see, I could honestly see Braun Strowman beating Roman Reigns to Hell in a Cell. And then Corbin walks out and opens the briefcase, and it's not Braun's name on the contract. Yeah, it could be something crazy like that. And I think that would be awesome. It'd be great to see cool, something yeah. Yeah, unique. But I think they'll go like the straightforward route. But I would have thought, like, you know, if he, why he should just held on to it to kind of like 
I guess, highlight the Money in the Bank briefcase week after week. And then at the end, when they finally get to the pay-per-view, walk out and then cash it in there, uh, it's already kind of cashed in. So yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know if we're reading too much into it, but it could be something that uh, is a bit exciting. But we did see them tag up for a match this week, taking on Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, as the match progressed, Roman got the tag and Braun did not come in to help Roman. In fact, he did the opposite. Uh, he laid uh, Roman out, and then he laid the shield out. Yeah. So this is the WWE trying to turn the fans against him. They think we really love the shield, which, you know, for the most part, a lot of people do. But I think they're also, you know, they're really behind Strowman. Yeah. He'd been, and I thought hey, when he grabbed Roman, what did he, you know he said? Oh, I'm not finished with you. And I'm That just was like, cool. Yeah, to hear that again. I really like when he used to do that with Roman. So maybe it's a Roman thing. Maybe that's, that's who he saves it for. But, maybe, uh, but it's just a shame the build to make Braun Strowman a face and then just yeah. throwing it right down the drain. It's just them thinking, they always think one person has to be a heel, one person has to be a face, when I just don't think that needs to be the case. I mean, Get rid of both of them. Get rid of both of them. Like, both heel and face. And let's just be who's a badass and who's, like, not a rule breaker. Mm, you could have, you can, you can get, uh, get rid of them, but you can also keep them, but then have these tweeners. And I think Braun can be a tweener. I think it's fine. You know, he can be dastardly and cruel as a heel but he can people like that man they yeah, like shit. that now they like when somebody destroys things they like when somebody just wants to throw Roman Reigns around because he's sick of him because we're all sick of him to some degree so I don't know I don't know if it'll work uh, the crowd I didn't say I wouldn't say they cheered or booed at the end I think they were more confused as to where yes. this was going Exactly. So it's going to play out weeks to come. We'll kind of see. Maybe he'll find a way to get the fans to, to boo him. Uh, but uh, for me, uh, it was confusing. And I wanted to see Strowman. It makes me worried for Strowman going into this Hell in a Cell match. And I, I feel like he may cash this in and just lose legit. And that is suck. I don't know. I, I mean, there's a. it makes the match interesting. Um, you know, Dean Ambrose, who seems to be on the cusp of Turning heel himself. It looks like he's which, festering, man. It looks like he's always like yeah. he's bitter and something's boiling inside of him. And yeah, I, I just feel like there's something there, you know. But then he puts on the shield gear. He runs out with the shield. He helps him. I mean, I guess he's got but Roman's still. back, but it just feels like there's something going on there. But if you look at some matches coming in the future, uh, I think um, what was it at the Super Showdown, the pay per view coming yeah. up. Uh, I think they're even scheduling a match for them to be steal the shield. So that's a ways away. So if they're still planning to be the shield then. Oh, uh, shit, you're right. Yeah, but again, I mean, going back to what we talked about weeks ago, uh, the card was at Hell in a Cell originally, Roman Reigns to take on uh, Kevin Owens. And clearly that's not going to be happening. No, for sure. But I could see them sticking with the Super Showdown because Shield versus Strowman, Drew and Ziggler, it's pretty dope. It's pretty cool. Yeah, but they could just do that next week on Raw. That's true, but I'm saying for the Aussies, you know what I mean? Yeah. For the no, Aussies, no it's going to be pretty cool. But I, I just can't wait to see, you know, when when um, Dean Ambrose, he's got to be thinking, fuck, I got injured. I miss WrestleMania. These two sons of bitches have fucking titles, and here I am fucking saving them. That's going to be his heel turn. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, there's many ways they can go about it. But ultimately, if you remember, Seth Rollins dove out the ring and quote unquote injured. Ambrose taking him out for quite some time and you know he's come back with a different attitude a different style and it feels like something's boiling underneath the surface so we hopefully we'll find out soon enough I wonder if he still has his crushes you know I love black guys we'll have yeah. to wait and see talking about the shield Seth Rollins KO what a great match to have on Raw and for the Intercontinental Championship dude That guy stole, steals the show. That was like highlight of Raw, hands down, uh, cooler than the finish. Uh, I freaking loved it, man. That match is... F uh, there was times where I thought Kevin Owens was going to win the IC. Well, I think that's kind of also the whole thing about it. Kevin Owens can kind of pull off these matches. He kind of came in and he beat John Cena. And he's been kind of... Well, I wouldn't say he's been missing. Like he's been... You know, I, I tweeted, oh, he's back from the dead. And I know he's only gone for like, what, one week, you know, after SummerSlam. Uh, but man, he looked like he was killed by Braun Strowman on that yes, ramp. exactly. And he got yeah. squashed, you know, so he got buried. So he was under the ground, he was dead, and now he's back. And uh, yeah, I thought maybe he was going to do this. He posted out some things on Twitter, the IC title. Um, so it was really cool to see these face off. Match of the night for sure. It was amazing. These guys brought it all out. 
Uh, Kevin even landed the stunner on Rollins. He didn't so get, well done. He didn't get the stank on it. And that's what Stone Cold, uh, it was funny, Owens was on Stone Cold's podcast um, at least a year ago or maybe even longer than that. And he was saying, oh, how did you think like my stunner? And Austin's like, listen, son. He's <laughs> like, if you're going to do it, you got to do it right. You got to put some stank on there. And, uh, He's too fat to curl his back, though. The way that's it kind of it. It's like you gotta you gotta kick him, and you gotta like jump and turn backwards at the same time. So like, you look at Austin; like he'd kick and like he just jump and turn while he was, and it was just. Uh, it was, I mean, Austin, you, nobody can do it like him. I hope one day, maybe. I mean, maybe Kevin Owens can learn how to do it, but I would. I, I miss the center. It's definitely one of my favorite moves of all time. The way you yes, come out yes. of nowhere, uh, it was amazing. I don't know if anybody should ever adopt it but they if they're going to use it man make it a finisher i hate this man when they, they make it just a signature move. i'm okay with it not i mean it's better Dude, than don't pin him did. don't pin him just keep beating him down after or like taunt or something i don't know i just or eh. use it like during promos like out of nowhere to pop yeah yeah maybe yeah just use it a, is- a little more smarter i guess what is Kevin Owens' finisher? Because like the pop up power bomb is lame. He hasn't using quite some time either. I think he often uses the super kick as well too. He uses the frog splash. I think it's kind of cool when superstars can have multiple finishes. We see that with AJ Agreed. Styles. We see that with Amos. Uh, even uh, uh, Rollins, Rollins doesn't use the pedigree anymore. So yeah, I guess not. But uh, he'll bring it back one day. Yeah, well, I think he will at some point in time. But, you know, it's kind of neat to see different possible endings with match, matches based on, you know, the moves, you know. Like, Carmel has her super kick, but she also has that submission that she used to use. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, so, where do we go? Because, you know, the match ended. I'm pretty sure it went to a commercial break, and we got back, and then Kevin Owens is in the ring. And... I quit. Where do we go from here? <laughs> Lots of lots of question marks and lots of possibilities, and I hope they do something interesting with this one. I know KO is advertised to be wrestling in the not too distant future. He's actually, I think, tagging with Elias to take on John Cena and Lashley at the Superstar Showdown. Um, so, I mean, these could change oh, these matches. That's horrible. It's terrible booking. That's terrible booking. Terrible booking. Absolutely, Elias and and, and Kevin Owens. Come on, but uh, that could change. We'll see. Um, but uh, you know, how do they reinsert him into this match? You know, there's some jokes going around that he'll be at All In and he'll be he'll oh be my God. Uh, he'll be in the over the budget over the budget battle royale and go on to maybe challenge for the Ring of Honor Championship. And Magic McMahon's kind of got this like little quiet thing under under the radar where he's going to be working with Ring of Honor. Like that would, that could be pretty cool if he pulled that off. Fans would forgive him for years of garbage shit. Oh. Instantly. Mar- the Marks would, put it that way. Yeah, and it could be the start of something magic. I think the WWE should be embracing this, This, I guess, climb that the independent circuit's having. Ring of Honor, you know, I think it's just doing amazing things. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know. It, it just... Where can you go wrong? You know, but uh, it's kind of cool, and I hope at the same time with this competition, you know, and I wouldn't say it's direct competition at this point, but you know, hey man, they sold out the Madison Square Garden the the, the weekend of WrestleMania. That's pretty big. Yep. So it's this big, man. this is you know this puts uh, McMahon on alert, and you know he's got to basically realize that maybe at this point in time he's got to think about tweaking his programming. But you know, we'll see, we'll see. And his uh, butthole is for sure clenched. It's it's yeah, it's puckering. <laughs> It's got to be puckering. I mean, dude, that's. I know it's not direct competition because of the level of WWE, but, you know, fans could tune into this. It's going to be aired on pay per view uh, through not only their own, whatever deal um, All In have with whoever's airing their pay per view, but New Japan Pro Wrestling is airing it as well through their, you know, outlets. That's so amazing. It's, it's fucking huge, man. Yeah, that's great. But. Talk, talk, um, talking about the indie scene, though, yes. on, on topic to some degree. So, you know, we've watched a little bit of KO and what he's done before he came to the WWE. And, you know, he was good friends with Mr. Adam Cole. So, Baby. you know, he talked about, you know, if he would have had Sami Zayn, he would have beat Braun Strowman. I thought that was funny that he mentioned Sami Zayn. And I was thinking, okay, well, so just to make sure that people remember who he is, because it was just a bit strange to place him there. Just maybe he kind of thinking to himself, he needs somebody to have his back. I'm mm. not exactly sure. So, you know, we kind of tease the idea, like imagine Kevin Owens comes back with the undisputed air. That'd be so fucking amazing. Mm. And there's ties between Adam Cole and Kevin Owens. As I discovered today, cause I had no idea. I don't know what episode it was of, again, I'm going to mention it, but being the elite and they talk about Kevin Owens being with the young bucks and Adam Cole as, uh, the Mount Rushmore or the whatever they would call themselves. I'm not even 100% sure. But interesting, dude, because if, if he was 
you know, the guy who brings up Undisputed Era, man, that'd be fucking amazing to watch. Mm-hmm. It'd be amazing to watch. And next week, Raw is going to be exciting to watch, too. Shawn Michaels is going to be there. I'm super Ooh. excited. Uh, I don't think we've seen him on, well, I guess on Raw since he cut off the locks. I was going to uh, say, yeah, it's going to be weird. Yeah, it's going to be, well, he'll be wearing a cap, you know. That's what he seems to wear these Still days. no hair. <laughs> well, you know, I actually think that, like, this is the, I honestly think that's the huge reason behind why he's not wrestling anymore. Because towards the end, it was sweating, it was thinning out so bad that WWE would have to Photoshop uh, pictures of his scalp uh, on, on pictures and oh stuff. Oh my God, he's that vain? Really? I don't think he was that vain. It just looked that bad. It really did. Really? So I think they were just doing it themselves. And it was funny because they didn't interview Shawn Michaels. And like, we talked about this on last week's podcast. But one of the things that he mentioned was how, like, you know, my, my hairline, you know, it's, it's going to look weird. It's not the same as it was. And I kind of feel like that's a big part of it because Shawn Michaels had the long hair. You know, like, if he's kind of like a not a lot of it's i don't know he's gonna look the same he's gonna be the same i think he can still deliver i'm sure a lot of it's in his head and like the fans have enough respect for him that they don't really care but dude they still cheer the undertaker and that guy looks like a pile of shit <laughs> like really he looks like a pile of shit Ooh. <laughs> Sorry. Ooh. all you undertaker fans he looks there. like he's fucking dead dude <laughs> Well, you know, we get to see him take on Triple H. And that's what Shawn Michaels will be there next week for, to talk about his thoughts on this. I feel like he's done this before. He comes out and he gives his thoughts on Triple H versus Undertaker again. So, probably be similar. He'll be like, I know firsthand, and he retired me. You can't mess with the Undertaker, but Triple H is mm-hmm. a dangerous man. And um, I don't know. Will they put Shawn Michaels in the mix? Will they make him referee? Do they really want to do this again? Uh, probably not. It'll probably just be a promo. So, oh, fuck, that, it would be cool if they did, though. Yeah, it'd be cool to have him involved in some way or the other. Yeah. So I know he's really heavily involved with NXT, so that's cool to see. But uh, something to look forward to on Raw next week. And another thing also is we're getting a tag team title match next week. The Revival beat the B team this week on Raw, and fuck they earned the a tag team title match. Yeah, well, fuck the Revival. Fuck the Revival. I'm not to a fan. To tell you the truth, not though, a fan. I, in the last two weeks or so on Raw, it's grown. they've grown on me a bit more just because they're like... A tag team? Mike's, no. <laughs> Just because of their like attitude talking about, you know, old school tag teams, about bringing back, you know, honor to the tag team division, it's the right time to start making fun of the B team. It's the right time to drop the B team, you know, while they're still hot. Yeah, I, I, I um, agree to that. I think yeah. so. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I'm not like, I'm not saying the rugby will stink. They're just kind of a little bit boring for me. And, uh, but they're all right. And I think like what I was trying to say earlier is like they actually are a tag team as opposed to the yes. B team. They're kind of a joke. We have the Authors of Pain and even the Ascension. I mean, like I'm not an Ascension fan by any means, but these are more, I guess, tag teams as opposed to the B team. It's kind of an experiment that it's kind of almost run its course, I would say. Um, but uh, yeah, I can't help but look at it. Was it who's the one with the mutton chops? Is that Scott I, I don't Dawson? know either of their names, bro. One's Scott Dawson. And, is it uh, Scott and Max? No, no, no. The Scott. What's the other guy's name? I, I see. Scott. Movie. Is it Dash Wilder? Dash Wilder. Yeah, is that's that it. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. But the one of the mutton chops. names. We've, yeah, I know. We've talked about one. Of the, one of the mutton chops is like a little bit like he's run the borderline of being chubby. And we talked about in the past. Well, you talk about Ruby Riot, and somebody said that Ruby Riot looks like somebody that would take a dump at a party and stink up. That's Doctor Huge and sign in the Huge Inverse. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. When I look at this guy, the mutton chops, he just looks like somebody who just takes stinky dumps. I don't know. He takes it. dirty shits. I don't know what it is about this guy. I'm just like, this guy looks like he stinks up the bathroom, man. <laughs> oh my god, dirty, dirty, dirty. But yeah, no, they they were more entertaining than they than they've been in the past. So I just want to see something happen with the tag team division. We're seeing it on the SmackDown now, and I want to see it on Raw. I want to see tag team wrestling. So it's been saved on SmackDown, or at least seemingly. So I hope I want to see the same thing on Raw. Um. What about Elias and Trish? That was a pretty dope segment. You were texting me during that. You enjoyed it. Oh, dude, I'm telling you. I mean, Kevin Owens, Rollins, best match of the night. You know, great. Uh, this may have been the, the segment of the night for me. I loved it. I love how Elias can just have the, the crowd eating out of the palm of his hand. He knows how yeah. to work them so well. He actually played a pretty decent musical uh, piece in the beginning. Like, he's really not... He, like For a guy who's been playing the guitar for like a year or two now... He hadn't approved, you know, he wasn't amazing, uh, but 
I think he played a pretty good musical piece. You know, it was all right. Uh, and then the crowd kind of was into it. He ended up trolling them. He trolled them about the Leafs. Uh, you know, he hit every point he needed to hit, leading the crowd on. And then Trish comes out, which is a pretty cool surprise. You know, Trish, Elias, what's going to happen? All the, she's a Toronto hometown native. So uh, that was exciting to see. She comes out. I sensed she was a bit rusty, a little bit nervous. But uh, she quickly picked back up pace. They had good back and forth. And then, man, uh, when when she called Trish 60 years old, (laughs) holy 60, (laughs) and that slap, oh, my God, was that loud. So I loved that segment. I thought Elias and and her worked well off each other, and uh, he trolled. So uh, Elias is hilarious. I I, I love the guy. It was good. It was good. It it got a little confusing when it, like, evolved into Natty and Foxy stuff and who else was there? Like everybody was there. Was the Bellas showed up? Run around. Uh, it was a, it was interesting. Uh, before we went on that Elias, though, I noticed so him and Bobby Lashley were kind of like going at it week after week, and then they just dropped it all of a sudden, right? So like it's just not a thing anymore because yeah. it sucked. It's yeah. just weird. They're putting Elias. I'm <laughs> uh, putting Bobby Lashley in these random segments each week just to have him in there. You know, it's like squashing who's, the ascension. Who is he week. with? You squashed the oh, ascension that's this who week. It was. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like they kind of put in these segments that are forgettable. You know, you can go pee, you can go grab a beer or whatever, and you know, we know he's going to squash them and. I don't know. I just can't really find a good place for him. Well, so Bob is pretty forgettable. Bob. Yeah. Bob, Bob, Bob ran. For a guy that looks that big, it's crazy that he's being booked in a forgettable It's his way. personality. The guy doesn't like, Edge was talking on his podcast about it, and he just doesn't have a fierce look. He looks too nice. He doesn't look mean. He doesn't look aggressive, you know? And, and he's fucking crazy. He had a great MMA career. He's nuts. Apparently, he got robbed by two dudes at an ATM and beat the shit out of both of them. Well, guy's a beast. Like, no, I know, he's but definitely like, he the best. Look- he's definitely not the best build in the whole roster by far. Uh, Who? Mm, yeah, I guess. I mean, Braun Strowman like is a build. monster, right? Yeah, like, Braun Strowman. Yeah, a I guess you know. I don't know. I guess you can contend, but in terms of like, ooh, ooh, your boy Drew Mackey. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Drew Mack. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Drew. Forgive me. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> I love seeing uh, him in the in the main event, kind of, and also being tied in with this whole Strowman thing. Like, it's kind of cool. They, they're putting a lot of stock in him already, so I like to see that. It's yeah. exciting. Yeah, they are, but I feel like he's. I, I'm worried that Dolph and him are going to get lost in the mix of the Shield and Braun Strowman. That's my own, like they're at the bottom of that totem pole. It's a really good totem pole to be on, but they are someone at the bottom. Hopefully, he can kind of pull himself. After yeah, this. no, I hope they yeah. make the best out of it. So you know, we'll see. Again, it can be a little bit concerning, but uh, you know, for me, it was a pretty good segment. Just like the Elias and Trish segment, I loved it. I just didn't like that it ended up. Uh, it kind of tied into a squash match with the ladies. So they're going back to these squash matches now. Uh, we took, we saw um, Natalia taking on. Foxy, she was wearing a really funky hat when she came out. It made me laugh. Yeah, super weird. <laughs> but uh, yeah, won really quickly with the sharpshooter. And we're even seeing this on SmackDown too, to some degree. Uh, I don't like these these squash matches for the women, but I guess it's better than not having them on there at all. Is or it? Or is it? Is yeah, it? I know. I'm trying is to. It? I'm trying to stretch yeah. here, folks. But I'd yeah. rather them have a promo backstage that pushed a storyline. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Instead of just squashing, especially if you're Naomi. Like damn. Oh yeah, she we're yeah, that's on Smack. Yeah, she yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. this was she's a really good champion and uh she grew quite a lot in that year and then now she's just basically copy paste matches with the iconics. And I guess they want to give credibility to the iconics. I get it, it's cool and all. They come out, they do their mean girl spiel and I don't really I don't really not, I don't enjoy it. I mean I don't I don't think it's, it's annoying that, now. I think it's it annoying. can be funny. I just don't think they reach funny. You know, every week they've done it a few times, but it just doesn't. They get They don't there. reach funny, and they stay just before funny, and then overdo just before funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an excellent yeah. way to put it. Excellent. It's poo. It's, it's iconic. Shit. It's not iconic. It's crap. <laughs> I tried. To, <laughs> I tried to rhyme something like crap on. No, no, but. you got it. You got it. You nailed it. You <laughs> it's nailed just it. Shit. Um, but SD Live SmackDown um, Land of Opportunity. It was the better show this week again. I liked it. I liked the way that they're delivering it. It had just such a good flow to it. I don't know if you noticed it seemed a little bit different than the weeks before. Just the way they would go from one match to the other and then AJ's segment. It just, it was, there was fluidity. Yeah, I think so. I mean, they have two hours to work with, so they have no lack of content to fit in there. And the production has been pretty good. I agree with you. And uh, we got the SmackDown Live show kicking off with New Day coming to the ring with New Day. The mock Stanley Cup. I thought that was hilarious. And they could, they could have it, done a lot more with it. It was like a yeah, it was a small Stanley Cup. They was came it a cut, cardboard cutout or was it? No, 3D? it was like a plastic. It was like a. Okay, because I, I missed the first few minutes, and then I was sitting there going, 
Is that the fucking Stanley Cup? Yeah, at Pancakes. And were they it. were they making fun of the Leafs? No, but they could have, you mm-hmm. know. But I guess they're not heels, right? Like I don't know. I thought Big E could have said something. I, I always feel like they're kind of teased with Big E being a heel, and I'm seeing. I it, told you they I'm were seeing it a little bit more now, and yeah. you know, uh, we saw this week they came out. They didn't mention anything about the Stanley Cup. Uh, it was interesting that they didn't, but it was I, I don't know. I guess because. They were in Toronto, and Toronto was a big hockey city. They wanted to make them happy and excited to see that cup because it could be, you know, a reality in the next few years. Who knows? No, uh, no, no. We we got to tell our listeners because a lot of our listeners uh, are probably not hockey fans, but we're Montrealers, right? And even though I don't support the Montreal Canadiens, Des is a huge Montreal Canadian fan, and the Montreal Canadiens and the Toronto Maple Leafs have had a rivalry forever. And long story short, the Leafs haven't won the cup in like what? Since Fucking 1967. F- it's like what? Don't make me do math. Damn, I was going to say like 45 Many, years or many, no, many years. But you know what? I will say I, I would definitely be excited to see the Cup come back to Canada. And, you know, Toronto sucking for so many years has given them a lot of draft picks. So they put together a pretty good team. And Montreal has just been shooting themselves in the foot. So, you know, hockey's been a, a little kind of a misery in my heart the past year or two. Yep. So uh, I don't really want to talk about it right now. All right. Sorry, bro. Sorry. All right. Let's move on to brighter things. We have the five-time tag team champions, the New Day, and we got to see King Booker. Did you did you hear him fuck up on his five time? Yeah, he said four times, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. I wasn't sure. I'm happy that you uh, confirmed that. But that's so Booker. He comes out, and I'm saying Booker when he's King Booker because that's what he is. And yeah. uh, he comes out, and he usually flubs a line or two. So I wasn't very surprised with that. It's not even worth making a meme or any joke out of because it's you know he's kind of expected with Booker. But it was fun. Yep. A really cool segment. And it was funny because when he was knighting all of them, he didn't give Big E a name. But I thought it was funny. He's like, well, you're big. You're Big E. <laughs> yeah. But then he looked like he was angry. And then all of a sudden, he just wasn't angry anymore. It kind of was weird how he just stopped being angry. But I don't know if that's kind of like, well, why did they not give him? I don't know. It felt like there must have been something to it, right? And they mentioned that they weren't going to break up, what, a week before on some interview that went big, and I'm sure it's a work. I'm sure come Royal Rumble, the breakup of the New Day. Wouldn't it have been awesome if like he gets pissed off, and then he just attacks uh, Booker, and then all of a sudden he attacks Kofi, he attacks Xavier, and then he smashes them with the Stanley Cup? And then just drops his tag team title and walks out. Yes, uh, that'd be man, freaking the, awesome. The, especially in Toronto, the, with the Stanley Cup yeah. being smashed over them. I mean, that would have been. I think it would have been pretty cool. So cool. So would have cool. been cool. So talking about cool folks, talking about tag teams. Yep. We got Rusev Day. So they're entering the tag team title picture. They're in a fun segment backstage uh, this week on SmackDown. Rusev was super goofy. Looked like he had a lot of fun. Uh, basically, Paige approached them and said, hey, someone reached out to me and basically you know, threw your name out there for being into the tag team title picture. And I like it. I like it a lot. And Rusev yeah, like was super lot. excited. Oh, what a present for Rusev and Lana Day. Thank you, Lana. And it wasn't Lana. It was Aiden. <gasps> yeah. Was it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I basically wanted to surprise Rusev. He surprised him with that news. Really cool. Exciting to see these guys back together. They were on point. And next week, we're going to have Sanity. The Usos and Rusev Day going one on going three on three one on three on three on three on three. You know what? Triple tag triple tag team triple threats don't make sense. There should be three dudes in the ring. Yeah, yeah, they should tweak like, some what rules. The hell? It's 2018. Let's update some rules, folks, or have some different Damn. kinds of matches, man. And remember, the, remember tornado tag like matches the, and, and the old video yeah. games? Those never happen. No, you know? never. That it, and who are they fighting if they win? They fight the bar? Then they the fight bar the bar. Won? So yeah. ultimately, we, let's think about the long game here, folks. New Day, I'm pretty sure you'll see New Day versus the bar because these guys tear it up. I think, it. I think they're going back to like, man, the division's been shitty. Uh, what can we do? Well, we've always had good matches with the Usos, the bar, New Day. So let's just put the bar back in there because they've been off for a while. And uh, I think that's the plan. That's the end game here. Uh, if not, might be the Usos. Uh, I don't know. I can't see the Usos losing next week, but they've also maybe they're taking, you know, look, they've had their turn. It's going to be the bar yeah. right now. And then they'll kind of do a side thing or whatever. Uh, maybe the Rusev Day will win next week. And then the week after they won't win against the bar and it'll be eight. I still feel like they're going to do this Aiden Rusev match. So I'm not completely convinced unless the WWE realized they need Aiden to end Bibi and Rusev Day, which I feel is the case. Uh, it feels like, I don't know, they've been doing these really long, drawn-out storylines. So Yeah, I think they need Rusev Day in Australia, though. Mm. I think they're going to need him for that show. So Maybe. 
It'll happen. Well, it's inevitable it's going to happen. But how cool would it be if Rusev chose Aiden over Lana? Oh, my God. That would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. They could work that in somehow, man. And they can, like, oh, incorporate into, like, total divas where, like, he's stuck sleeping on the couch or something. I can't believe he chose <laughs> Aiden. He's, like, sleeping. Uh, total divas is so good, dude. Rusev, Miz Rusev, and Maurice. Rusev Day. Rusev Miz Day. and Maurice uh, ended this week for their summer um, their summer season finale. That was short. So. Yeah, well, they only booked, like, five or six episodes, but they re- they reordered another package. And, uh, dude, they've been on fire. Uh, their segment on SmackDown with uh well actually it wasn't their segment it was what it was daniel bryan and brie versus not well, even daniel versus. bryan versus cian amos yes. and uh it's, you know zelina vega was there on the outside so and so was brie bella and yeah the match was actually really good the guys had good chemistry together and uh it was funny because there was no like loser or winner in this match they kind of both looked okay they both were amazing safe. yeah they both saved face in the end right so there was a disqualification you know, almost kind of helped out a little bit. He ended up locking in Daniel Bryan in the yes lock. And mm-hmm. Maria said, look at her, look at her. And uh, gave her the DT in the middle of the ring. And uh, yeah, it was pretty nasty. So the build up is moving along. So I like it. I like it. The match was like on fire, man. Uh, that move that almost does when he jumps out the ring and does like a barrel. Yeah, he like cross twirls. Body. Yeah, it's like a corkscrew. It's barrel so roll. well done. Yeah. And uh, The Miz has some new merch. Very cool looking merch. Um, yeah, it was weird. I see him in a baseball shirt. It's like The Miz yeah. coming out in a baseball shirt, eh? Hmm. I like it. it. It works well because he seems to wear them all the time on a show. But it was like... It was... It got pretty personal, bro. Like the way that they made Daniel Bryan watch Bree get fucking DDT was so... It was so vicious. It was just... And then the kiss at the end, it was just so well done. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, man. I That's it. what The Miz does. No, but the writing on SmackDown, what's going on? We thought Road Dogg was a fucking idiot. If this guy's running the show, I mean, fuck, take well, my money. Uh, I mean, writing to some degree, but it also takes like the wrestlers to go out there and actually you know, bring life to that writing. And I think the Miz, I know, you know but these Miz can do lines, that. I'm invested in every storyline, dude. Yeah, yeah, every SmackDown's been good. I think the fact that it's two hours helps a lot, too, because it's kind of short and sweet. Yeah, AJ Styles... Uh, Samoa Joe this week again getting personal he called Wendy I think it was weird I mean if I was Wendy I would have just hung up but like <laughs> call her ID yeah I don't <laughs> know Joe, I'm Joe gonna play a little bit devil's advocate here this is my least favorite storyline on Smackdown right now possibly really I just feel like it's the same thing week after week you know AJ yeah, comes out cuts a promo week after week. Joe cuts a promo but it's like yeah they're stalking but it's not even creepy stalking remember when Diamond Dallas Page was stalking yeah. the Undertaker's wife and he'd like show up at the house like, yes, I feel like they're going to get there soon. Nah, maybe, yeah, I they're hope going, so. They're getting closer and closer. Just not enough interactions with them in the ring, not enough matches, but I guess, you know, I don't know. If they're doing matches week after week, I would feel it's repetitive. So I guess it's a bit fresh, but every time he comes out, I know he's going to cut a promo. He's going to talk about Joe and, you know, I was going to destroy him and Joe does the same thing and then he calls when I don't know. I just feel like we're getting the same thing week after week after week. Not that it's terrible, but it's, you know, it's not as fresh and it's one of the lesser enjoyable segments for me. And I'm probably kind of alone on that. I'm sure lots of people are enjoying that. So Yeah, it's probably unpopular. I like the sure. magic they could do in the ring, though. I'm looking forward to the match. It needs to be in a cell, though. This match needs to be in a cell. More than Randy and Jeff Hardy needs to be in a cell. Oh, I know. And, like, what an anticlimactic uh, announcement, you know? Jeff Hardy's like, I will get you in the hell in a cell. And he does that pose. And, like, the fans are just like, cool, I guess. Yeah. They're like, your face paints cool. And he Dick said Hans RKO on his face. He wrote RKO yeah. on his own face. It was, it was cool. Yeah, I guess. Like, yeah, that's cool. But is he going to do a swanton off the cage now <laughs> through the well, table? I was reading a tweet about him saying that if he would have fought, he wants to fight Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell to close off his career, or it was a quote from him way before. Uh, there's no and he way said that's that he wanted happen. To, no, but maybe, you know. He's looking at this as, I mean, RK, uh, Randy's not a bad guy to end your career on. And if he swantons, I don't think he's ending his career just yet, cage. though. I don't think it's going to be just yet. I know he talked about wanting another title run, and I think he kind of left the impression that it's going to be in the next few years. So God, I think. You think he's got years left in him? I think he'd give him like two more years, maybe. He might he might have that in him. As he seemed to imply it. He said he wanted to have more. Keeps, he said he wanted to have more t- uh, WWE title runs with an S. So like, if that you know. fucker keeps swantoning on the uh, apron like that, he ain't going to last. Yeah, years, that was man. dumb. That guy's nuts. Yeah, but dumb, you know, but, uh, thank you. So I liked it. 
<laughs> yeah, but again, you know, I agree with certain matches being the Hell in the Cell, certain ones not being the Hell in the Cell, and looking forward to certain matches at Hell in the Cell. And I'm going to tell you, a match that I'm definitely looking forward to at Hell in the Cell, and it should be in one, is Charlotte versus Becky. Come uh, on. Yeah, and... Let's give a little bit of props to Carmella and the fact that whoever let them have, you know, a 50 minute segment to close off SmackDown. I thought Carmella kept up. I thought she looked fine in the ring. I know, Charlotte, I could see you making faces, (laughs) but I mean, for Christ's sakes, she's not good. But her, her she super did taps, a job. The super taps she gave this week, she gave Charlotte two super kicks in a row, and they were like the weakest little taps that. Uh, you mean the super kick that beat Asuka? Yeah, that was a super tap as well. And Asuka, <laughs> she got beat so bad that she left the country. So yeah, where's she at? I don't know. I don't. I don't even want to talk about it. She got. She's gonna come back as a clown. Maybe the evil clown. Yeah, if you guys ever heard or know about her past, uh, look up Asuka as the evil clown. Really terrifying. And uh, it'd be cool to come have her come back saying that she was like you know broken since WrestleMania and uh, <gasps> she's refocused. Did you say broken? <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm just, I want to see her back and I want to see her dominating again. You know, I just, they did, they ruined her. It, it is what it is and whatever. <laughs> but Charlotte, <laughs> Becky, that's what matters. And yes, yeah. Carmella was in the main event. You know, she was just circumstantially there because the main event was circled around Charlotte and Becky. But yes, Carmella did a good job. She hung in there. Yeah. Her wrestling's yeah. getting better. Uh, you know, so good, good for her. She, you know, she did her job. She's a good heel champion. I'm sure she'll pick up maybe another title reign later on down the line. But for now, folks, it's all about Charlotte and Becky. And I really hope, and it seems like the WWE may have learned their lesson this week because when Becky came out, uh, she didn't smack talk the crowd. She went right after Charlotte and the crowd ate it up with a spoon. They were cheering, so Becky, Becky, Becky. And uh, beat the crap out of her, got the title, asked the mic, should give it to me and hurry up, takes it. You know, I'm going to see you in Hell in a Cell. And then calls her a bitch, throws the microphone down at her. So pulls good. Pulls the title so up. Good. I loved it. Crowd would loved it. They went home happy. So I really hope the WWE realizes that maybe they shouldn't do the, you know, heel 101 recipes of well if you're a heel make sure the crowd turn you turn against the crowd and you know you were never there for me come on man who are you trying becky didn't even believe that the first week like the crowd has been so behind her for such a long time yeah. so i really hope this could maybe be a trend of something new where you don't necessarily have to be you know a full-blown heel you can kind of be a heel but still be cheered you know again you know if their fear is turn it's going to turn charlotte into a heel I don't think so, man. Charlotte can go on and fight Carmelo. They'll, they'll they'll cheer for Charlotte. I just think let them cheer for who they want to. Let them have heels versus heels, faces versus face. I think Fuck Becky, yeah. there's something special here, and I just really hope they do it justice. So people are saying a lot of, oh well, Becky, you know, they're kind of reminding them of like Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, being the anti-hero coming out there and ruthless. Like, well, first of all, she's not going to be Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, no one's going to be. <laughs> no one's going to be Stone Cold Steve Austin. She'll be Becky Lynch, and I really hope this is kind of like you know the start. You know, Stone Cold was the ringmaster, and then he became Stone Cold Steve Austin. I hope this is going to yeah. be something for Becky, where she's going to take off. It's going to transform her character. I want her to be able to shred it on the microphone, and uh, I don't know. I just I I have I guess maybe big expectations for this. So I don't want to be let down, but I'm, I'm happy with what happened this week. I'm excited for this match, but you know, to my point, which opened this topic is this match should be in a hell in a cell. And that would have made the, the, the segment perfect for me. I will see you at hell still got time. in a cell. Bitch. We still got time though. There's, we still got time. And, and it's weird because I don't know where they can go with this because Becky, if she loses it at hell in a cell, then it's just such a momentum killer. But if she wins it, it's like the chase is over. The continuation, right? yeah, the, yeah chase is over. the chase is over. And I think she needs to chase. I don't know what they can do. I just don't know what they can do to keep this going past Helen and Cell. So they'll have to surprise us. It'll be exciting, and we'll be watching it together, J Bomb and myself. And we'll be bringing you our feedback. We'll be on Periscope. We'll be doing the usual shit. But uh, it's going to be exciting. We're looking forward to it. Lots of events coming up. Super Showdown, Hell in a Cell. Evolution. We got all in coming up this weekend as well, all too, in. folks, man. So a lot of cool wrestling happening, folks. Really excited. And we got something really awesome for the listeners coming up in you know in a minute or so. And uh, before we wrap up the episode, uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter at underscore Talkmania. Check us out on ProWrestlingTees.com. 
slash Talkamania, buy some merch, 20% off, enjoy All In, and most of all, enjoy our interview with Mick Foley coming up right now. For J-Bomb, I'm out of here. Des, say bye. Happy Rusev Day. Bye, bye. All right, guys, it's not every day we have guests on Talkamania, but when the opportunity came up for this one, well, we had to jump all over it. I have the honor of sitting down with a three-time WWE champion, an eight-time tag team champion, a hardcore champion, WWE Hall of Famer, the hardcore legend, Mick Foley. Mick, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. Um, as I'm, as you're giving me that very kind introduction, I'm thinking of a very odd uh, Montreal memory. Oh, yeah, what's that? I would only been with WWE for uh, about uh, a month. My uh, my bags got lost at the airport. And uh, I'm literally walking around Montreal. I've got one spare pair of underwear with me in a okay. plastic bag. Check in the hotel. <laughs> plastic bag with a spare pair of underwear. The airport says that the uh, the the bag from Michael Foley has been picked up and delivered to WWE offices and WWE offices has no, <laughs> has no record of the pickup. And I, long story short, this will not be part of the show. And if it was, I would polish <laughs> it up. But there was an office employee named Michael Foley. So oh, for three days, uh, my bag sat in office employee, Michael Foley's uh, office while I traveled around uh, Quebec with one pair of underwear. Oh boy, man! Sorry to hear about that. Uh, Montreal's kind of known for having uh, kind of crappy airports. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Are they really? Yeah, a little bit. They've lost my bags. I thought you could say so. Montreal's known for having unbelievably uh, controversial wrestling events. There. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. I have to tell you though, after my show, uh, uh, my show is coming up. It's the Comedy Nest. Yep. My goal is to put on the type of show that has people <laughs> wondering. Which one was the real Montreal screw job? Oh boy, holy jeez! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'll put out a good. It'll be a great. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm Over. having a lot of fun with these shows, and uh, and I think this will be. Uh, last time I did Montreal was the uh, Just for Laughs five years ago, and I'm uh, looking forward to coming back and putting on a great show. Well, well, that's it. That's what I was getting at. You know, I was going to tell the listeners you've already began your Canadian tour for uh, Twenty Years of Hell. Um, can you tell our listeners exactly what the tour is all about and what they can expect from the show exactly? Yeah, man. Nice of you to ask. Uh, uh, that was one of the problems I had. Well, well, when I went to Montreal five years ago, I remember like, you know, Brendan, Brendan Burns is internationally known, respected comic, uh, was, was telling me I should gravitate towards more wrestling stuff. And then I, and I remember talking about it like, when being asked, if it was a wrestling show. I was like, well, I use wrestling as like a way to get into other subjects. He's like, mate, you do a wrestling show. So I said, no, I, I try to have social issues. He's like, mate, it's a wrestling show. <laughs> and then I, and while I was there at that hotel, I see like 250 funnier people than me. And I realized it was the wrestling stories that made my, you know, experiences different. And after I, you know, that experience in just for less, like, you know what? I think I'll do a wrestling show. And so this 20 Years of Hell tour is specific to the Hell in a Cell match that took place 20 years ago. And it seemed like a big challenge to try to do an entire like one hour, one hour, 10 minute show. Plus we have a 45 minute, 30 to 45 minute Q&A every night. Um, and once I started writing and realizing like how many amazing things happened that night, not just amazing in the, that they were spectacular or memorable visually, but just surreal little incidents surrounding the uh, event. Uh, the, the challenge became how do I limit it to an hour and 10 minutes? Like what oh. do I cut out? Um, and so uh, I try to try to bring, make each show a little bit different, but um, I can, uh, I can state unequivocally. I think I got that unequivocally, unequivocally. <laughs> and I was trying to add an extra syllable to impress you guys <laughs> as a, as a best selling author. Uh, that it's, it's the best show I've, uh, I've ever done. Oh, that's awesome. We're, we're super excited. Um, I didn't know it was completely geared towards, uh, you know, that hell in a cell from 20 years ago. So uh, we're definitely excited about, uh, to hear more about that. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm, I was inspired by Bruce Springsteen doing the River Tour so that if, uh, 
people walk out of the river tour and say, he didn't play spirit of the night. You're like, it's the river tour. So, <laughs> uh, you know, if I don't talk about, uh, my tag team with Al Snow, it just no, it's the uh, 20 years of L tour. Oh, awesome. So, uh, apart from the tour, man, like, uh, have you been up to anything else? Any more books coming out, blogs, maybe another season of Holy Foley? You know, what's coming up in the future <laughs> after the tour? No, I, I mean, I've got a, I wrote a bonus chapter to last year's Christmas memoir, so that'll be on paperback. Uh, but it's not like, uh, people were waiting to snap up the paperback, you know, I mean, that's when you're writing a Christmas memoir, you realize there's a very limited, uh, uh, audience for that one. But I, I, I do enjoy writing. Um, so anytime something strikes me and I feel like it needs to be written, I get the, get the power to do that. Right on. Uh, I, I know we're tight on time. I uh, wanted to ask you a few questions surrounding, uh, some of the, uh, current WWE product, if that's cool with you. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. In, in particular, I have to, I have to oh, disclaimer, Sure. Uh, my my children, other than Noel, have kind of stopped watching. Okay. And so I I'm not as familiar with the product as I have been in years past. Okay. No no worries. I think this. Is... I could I could have probably faked my way through it. Yeah, I think you'll be able to. Uh, I, <laughs> I hear wrestlers are good at that, but uh, I'm gonna going to be heads up with you and tell you I may not have answers. All right, not a problem. Well, uh, in particular, the women's division, um, seeing as that you've always been a huge supporter of that division, um, it seemed fitting to get your take on a few things going on currently. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it pretty, you know, popular question topics. Uh, I'll start off with the most obvious here, Ronda Rousey. I got to get your take. Uh, do you think it's helping the product? Do you think it's hurting the product? You know, what, what do you think? Well, I think Ronda's done an amazing job. Um, uh, our match with Nia Jax was really good. And uh, I know I'm going by uh, like a, a different standard. I'm going by overall enjoyment and memorability. But right. uh, the match she had at WrestleMania was my favorite match of the year. And this is granted that I haven't watched as many matches this year as I have in years past. So I think the most important thing uh, for everyone to see that night is that she absolutely positively was not phoning it in. And it looked like there was no place she'd rather be than in that ring. So she's got, you know, Natalia, you know, traveling with her, learning every day. And she's putting uh, eyeballs on the product and getting people talking. And so for those who begrudge her the championship, I mean, they need to look long term that, um, you know, women's wrestling and WWE is going to be getting more and more attention, partially because of Ronda. Well, that's it. We're, we're a pro Ronda podcast, so we're, we're glad to hear that as well. Um, I don't know if you're as familiar with this, but, uh, recently we've seen a Becky Lynch heel turn, uh, and yes. yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> it hasn't been super well received by the WWE fans. Me personally, I've loved it. I just wanted to get your take on it and see if you think that, uh, you know, they've gone in the right direction with this one. Not super well received in the sense that no one's booing her. Yes, exactly. Um, I'm, I told, well, I don't know if I should tell on Becky, but, uh, <laughs> she does consult me every now and then and I told her just uh, I was always more concerned with interest than I was with heat um, and uh, when I saw when they were saying you deserved it I, I didn't think they were saying you deserved it to Charlotte I thought they were saying you deserve it to Becky like oh my god you're finally going to get that push That's it. that we've all been waiting for and I think uh, Becky unleashed Becky can't help but be entertaining and be funny but I advised her, you know, in the words of Paul Heyman, to uh, one of the most important lessons I learned was make them laugh and cut them off and almost make them feel bad for laughing. And uh, <laughs> so I just hope they give Becky some freedom. I think she uh, has been one of the great promos of the company when given the chance. And uh, and I I think she'll really I think it's going to be great. And I think the match with her and Charlotte will be uh, uh, amazing. And uh, and I'll be watching that one for sure. Right on. Um, currently in the WWE Women's Division, uh, not to single anybody out, but if you would, uh, who's the most underrated or misused um, woman on the uh, on the roster today? Oh man, well the um, for whatever reason the. Sasha Bailey, um, the heel turn didn't really take, um, again, I haven't watched it, but, um, to the casual observer, it went from going, okay, so they're enemies, they're friends. And, um, 
you know, you got to go with what Mr. Miyagi said. You know, you, mm-hmm. once, once you stay on one side of the road, you're fine. The other side, you're fine. You get in the middle, squashed just like a grape. And that storyline just kind of got caught in the middle and uh, and didn't didn't catch on. Um, but, um, but, you know, both of them are super talented. Uh, hopefully there'll be a storyline that catches on. And in the meantime, they're still both vital parts of the women's uh, evolution. Yeah, well put, well put. Uh, Mick, are we ever going to see Noel in a WWE ring? <laughs> no, Noel got injured. I mean, she <laughs> two daughters in the emergency room twice in the same week. And uh, in the past, her knee is dislocated. I see her uh, collarbone is look almost like begging to be broken. <laughs> you know, she's... Uh, She's just, you know, she's got some other opportunities. And all the other things, my daughter has a long swan's neck. That's perfect for, like, modeling and other things. <laughs> it's not meant for German suplexes. You know, I'd be really <laughs> worried every single day as a dad. Oh, man. Um, fair enough. Uh, a bit of a change in direction. Um, with all the hype surrounding this week's uh, huge indie event, All In, I just want to grab your opinion quickly. Uh, how do you think this affects the business of a whole? And is it something that you look at as a positive for pro wrestling overall? Oh, yeah. I think it's super positive. I think, um, you know, the more places there are to go for, for guys and choices they can make, uh, it's better for everyone. And it makes WWE better. If they know that there's talent out there who who can, you know, I don't want to say call their own shots in an egotistic way, but guys who can plan their own schedules, um, turn down offers, say, thank you, but I'm, I'm happy, uh, here, you know, going to Japan, doing ROH, mm. working on this, their own show. I think it's phenomenal. You know, like I am, I'm, I think in my own way, I'm very loyal to, I'm w, I'm a WWE guy at heart, right? but I think my first uh, commitments to the guys who do the work and, uh, to have a, a show by the guys <laughs> of the guys and for the guys yeah. and women, uh, when I say guys, I'm being inclusive there, of course. uh, sell out so quickly and the, which I think will, uh, you know, there's a, a really high probability. It's going to be a great show as well. I think it's good for all of us. And, uh, I mean, you know, I, I <laughs> I'm sure it's caused Mr. McMahon a little <laughs> uh, frustration, but, uh, you know, it's, it, in the long run, it's good for, it's good for his product. That's it. That's that's exactly how we see it as well. Um, finally, before we wrap this all up, uh, we we ask this to all of our guests. Uh, it's going to be a tougher question for you because you know you've fallen off cells, you've been put through burning tables, barbed wire, you name it, you've done it. But uh, what we what we want to know is what is the one wrestling move that you've always hated taking? Uh, the German suplex. <laughs> all right, I did. I, I hated it. That's why I I see. Uh, people thought I was out of my mind. I was actually completely in my mind and in control of almost all my landings. So uh, when you're in a German suplex, you are completely out of control. And so I would just make sure that my plan B was better than their plan A's. Uh, how about, and I just didn't put myself in a situation where I was being thrown backwards very often. <laughs> so I guess we'll never see a Mick Foley... Uh... Brock Lesnar, Suplex City type match, eh? No, no, the <laughs> love of God, no. no. I gotta, I would, I'd be able to say, Brock, I think what you need is a snapmare in your repertoire. <laughs> right <laughs> oh, on. Oh, my God, snapmare, snapmare. I mean, if they call that, right? My God, snapmare. Look at the velocity. <laughs> that was so awesome. So, Mick, I just want to thank you for your time today, man. It's been extremely exciting to have you on the show. Um, we're looking forward to your stop right here in Montreal, Quebec on uh, September 12th. <laughs> you, you, you just stole my catchphrase. Ah, come on. I'll, I'll, I had I'll, to. Never, I'll never do this interview again. <laughs> All uh, right. Actually, hey, all right, thanks. Looking for and it's a small place, the Comedy Nest, so I don't know it's filling up quickly. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we're going to have a great night. Yeah, I just wanted to see if you wanted to tell our listeners where you're going to be in the next few days and where they could pick up tickets for your show. Yeah, I just go to realmickfoley.com if anyone happens to be listening. And uh, here's us. We'll be in uh, uh, Nanaimo uh, tonight. Uh, New Westminster has just had 30 extra tickets going sale. We had to move to a bigger building. Uh, Saskatchewan has tickets on sale. Uh, Winnipeg is sold out. And then we go to Ontario. And, man, we blanket Ontario, um, St. Catharines, 
Fergus, London. Help me out here, guys. <laughs> Timmins, Kingston, Ottawa, Brantford, Montreal, and then we go to the East Coast. The tickets are you know really moving quickly. We go to uh, uh, Moncton, uh, New Brunswick, and we're working right now on a Newfoundland show. Oh, Sydney, Nova Scotia as well. So, uh, we're gonna have some, well, I have a big announcement today. So, uh, for Newfoundland, first time there in many, many years. Right on. Last time I was in Newfoundland, uh, one of the greatest crowd reactions I've ever seen was uh, me. <laughs> it wasn't me, but I was teaming up with Stone Cold against The Rock and someone. And uh, The Rock, someone threw in one of those wrestling buddies. And The <laughs> Rock had it in the ring and actually, like, Kicked the uh, elbow to the side, you know, threw off his pad and dropped the people's elbow right on Steve's on. Uh, Steve's wrestling buddy. <laughs> and Steve couldn't take it. He hit the, re- you know, he stormed in. And the reaction was just, you know, just freaking phenomenal. And that was, that wasn't a bad word I used, was it? No, 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 we're good. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, man. Well- All right, so I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, it was an honor to have you on the show. And, uh, you know, we hope Canada lives up to their reputation. We hope to take good care of the hardcore legend. Uh, Mick, thank you so much for being on the show, man. I really can't thank uh, you. Enough. You got it. Have a nice day. All right. You too, man. All right. Cheers. Bye.